Respublica Serenissima, the most serene republic, uh, was uh, an extraordinary state by any standards in European history. Uh, it functioned from 1572 until uh, 1793, 95, 223 years. It consisted of two parts, the Corona, or the Crown Lands of Poland, and secondly, the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. The Corona uh, consisted partly of the old kingdom of Poland, plus the whole of Ukraine. The Grand Duchy consisted of modern-day Lithuania, plus the whole of what is Belarus. The official language of the Corona, the Kingdom of Poland, was Latin uh, and Polish. The official language of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania was Ruski or Ruthenian, in a form which is now known as Old Belarusian. The best title for this system is, I think, the, the noble democracy. Uh, of course, in the 16th, 17th century, there was no uh, modern-style democracy where all inhabitants uh, participated. Um, uh, only the nobles uh, could participate, uh, and they formed 2% of the population. Even so, that is more, it's twice as many as the uh, people who could participate in politics in the Kingdom of England. Most extraordinary, however, were the royal elections. In the age of monarchy, the idea that a king could be elected was ridiculous. Uh, and yet, uh, the, uh, the authors of the the Zetpospolita, in the middle of the uh, 16th century, um, some of whom were very distinguished Renaissance scholars, uh, de deliberately wanted to avoid an imperial system where there would be a, a king or emperor. Instead, they wanted a, um, a chief executive who was elected and dependent on the, uh, uh, on the citizens. Uh, in a way, the elected king of this state is a predecessor, perhaps, of the President of the United States. The, the essence of this uh, state was a multinationality, uh, many languages, many religions, uh, many cultures, many nations. It's absolutely clear that the the Sech Pospolita, the Commonwealth, um, contained and protected a great variety of religions um, from Roman Catholicism, Byzantine Orthodoxy, uh, to Greek Catholic religions, Protestants, Calvinists and Lutherans, uh, and then a very large Jewish population with various branches of Judaism, and, of course, Muslims. There was a, a significant community of Muslim Tatars in the, in the East, especially in the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. The Zetsch Pospolita was formed, was born in 1572, in the year of St. Bartholomew's Eve, the terrible massacre in Paris where 20,000 French Protestants were, were killed. And the reaction... Uh, in the Zetsch um, Pospolita was to form a league, a solemn league, uh, which swore that no differences of religion would lead to violence. Uh, then in the middle of the 17th century comes the, the great catastrophe, what is known in Polish as the potop, the, the deluge, when the uh, Commonwealth was overrun by Swedes, Swedish armies marching up and down, uh, Cossacks from Ukraine, and of course, Muscovite armies from the east. Uh, in that, uh, in the 20 years between 1648 and 1668, about a quarter of the population was killed. 
the, uh, or died through war and plague. Uh, the economy of the, of the state was uh, greatly damaged. And even the great Sobieski was unable to rescue the internal um, affairs of the state. The, the old republic, as it's sometimes called, was destroyed in 1795, and there was no independent Polish state uh, for 123 years until 1918 in the 20th century. So a long period where the heritage of the Rzeczpospolita was diluted, but it was never forgotten. In my view, the uh, memory of the old Rzeczpospolita is extremely important for young Poles. Uh, until the Second World War, Poland was a multinational country. Uh, Poles, meaning Polish speakers, or usually Polish Roman Catholics, only formed two-thirds of the population. So one out of every three Polish citizens was not Polish. Uh, and it was very common for uh, people of different nationalities, different religions, different cultures to mix. And whether you are Catholic or Jewish or Protestant, or orthodox, you are used to living with people, neighbors of, of, of different religions and cultures. Uh, this was artificially changed during the Second World War. Uh, the Jewish population was killed by the, uh, by the Nazis. The uh, e eastern frontiers were changed, so mo most of the Ukrainians and Belarusians were, were excluded. Uh, the Germans in Western Poland were expelled and modern contemporary Poland is artificially Polish. It's the most ethnically homogenous country in the whole of Europe and it's very unnatural. Uh, and I think in order for young Poles uh, to understand their origins and to understand life in the European Union, where there are dozens of nationalities, dozens of, uh, of languages, dozens of cultures, then they can look to their own past, this interesting, rich past of Poland-Lithuania, and see a model which in some way, ways applies to their own condition.